Welcome to Gold Derby. I'm senior editor Denton Davidson here with Darius Konji, the Oscar-nominated cinematographer of Alejandro <laughs> Gonzalez in Yarratu's Bardo, A False Chronicle of a Handful of Truths. Darius, congratulations on your Oscar nomination. It's the second one of your illustrious career. You were first there for Evita in 1996. So what was that morning of Oscar nominations like for you? And how does it feel to receive your second nomination? Very nice. It's a wonderful feeling. It's um, it's unexpected and uh, wonderful. It's I'm in France. I'm I'm talking from Paris. I'm in Paris at the moment in France, and it's uh, no, it's a, it's wonderful. It's wonderful for this movie. Uh, you know, I'm very happy for all of us for for the for the director for Alejandro and I too, and uh, for the whole crew. We they are behind each frame of the film and. And uh, I just feel that it's their Oscar, it's their nomination as much as mine. You know, it's like their Oscar nomination uh, is really to share. That's what I told them. They were all very happy, but I told them I remember every single of them. Uh, I mean, especially the director, which uh, I feel especially Alejandro is, is very much a director that's very, you know, very much behind um, every frame. It's really his film, it's really his mood, his, uh, the story he was he wanted to tell uh, this way, and it really looks like him, and it really looks, uh, you know, as uh, he he wanted he wanted it like this. At the same time, he wanted very personal and intimate and very epic, you know, and um, and uh, he feels very very good with it, and I'm very happy with that. And I feel the crew was absolutely amazing, you know, the uh, as you know, the like the dolly grip was amazing. The 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 DIT was amazing. The key grip, the the camera operator was absolutely stunning. You know, the demo operator, the gaffer. Every I remember every single of them. So I told him this is the share that it, it shows the it shows the passion of a, a group of people and the whole Mexican crew was amazing. Yeah. So it's a show their passion to make uh, Bardo. You know, to make Bardo for Alejandro the way he wanted it. And it was a personal film for Alejandro, um, but it's not a traditional film. It's it's like an almost three hour epic journey of this journalist turned documentarian who's on this introspective journey to reconcile his past, present and Mexican identity. When you read this script from Alejandro, I, I would love to hear your initial thoughts because Alejandro himself said it wasn't really, he didn't really have a story or plot. That wasn't his goal. He wanted an experience. Um, what were your thoughts when you first read it? Were you were you confused about where it was going, or were you excited? What what did you think? When I read the script, I was not. I was very much. Uh, I was very very excited. I thought it was a magnificent script, maybe even the best script, uh, the one of the most exciting script, uh, one of the most exciting script I ever read. You know, it was amazing to read. I didn't read the script. Right away, we had a few conversation over because he wanted to t tell me about the story before I even read the script to understand. Really, you know, he wanted to make make sure. You know, when he called me to to come to to Mexico to join him to make the film, he wanted to know, you know, who I was and what I wanted to do. You know, and then he sent me. Then he realized I don't, he hadn't sent me the script. He sent me the script. I read it and I was blown away but it was not confusing at all it was it's a, it's an experience like you say but like, like he like he wanted but it's also it was, there was a real story that when you read the script it's actually a real story and it's very personal to him and it's a very real you know it's a story when you read it you can follow it you know and you can follow the story of the it's it's in different layers, of course. It's Bardo, exactly as it says. You know, between between different layers, between life and death, and and um, but it it is a it is a, a real a real story for me. I, I I read it and I interpret it also as a real story. You know, it has to have this component, this element of realness into the. Um, into the fantastic, you know, and the fantasia, fantasia. And the film starts in the desert with this shadow projected. And we're seeing this shadow attempt to fly and fail. And it's this sort of beautiful, surreal overhead shot. So right off the top, we're, we know we're in for a visual spectacle. Can you talk about shooting that opening sequence and, and what you used to accomplish that? Well, it was amazing. We, we, we did it in the different layers. We first, uh, we first, uh, 
hooked um, Silverio, Daniel Jimenez Cacho, our actor. We attached him on, on, on wires and we, we had him on uh, flying for us in a stage in Churbusco, in this old uh, Mex Mexican studio of the golden age of, uh, of cinema of, um, of, Mexican, of Mexico. And we had a big stage and we had him flying and we had sensors on him to capture the, the, uh, his movement, to see how the movement of a human is uh, when, he was move, when he was flying up in the air. And we had him fl fly in the air, track in the air like this. And we followed him with a camera. We followed the shadow with a camera. And we project, I projected his shadow on the floor. It was a big, long shadow. And you know how the shadow, your human shadow, if you project it on the sand, on the, on the floor, so project it from, the, from, a, from a light far away, you will have this shape that you saw in the film. It was this very uh, surreal, long shape, like a bird, you know, like, an, like a mythical bird almost, you know. It has this real, it has really this shape. So we analyze it and then we, we, uh, we transform it. We we filmed the desert. We we filmed the desert uh, with a camera. We, we flew the camera over the desert, you know, and then uh, at a really at, at the beginning of light in the desert, the very early light in the desert. We and we we then we uh, we added the shadow on it. The real the the real shadow was made for this. Um, uh, in the, like in visual effects, was made for the. For, for for this scene, but in real, like it's real, the human shadow. It was very exciting to do. It was a mix of the early cinema, the emotion when you filmed, the, when we, we analyzed the shadow in this stage felt like Melies, you know, like the beginning of cinema almost. You, you film something that's very organic, very real. And then you film the desert, you know, you have this cold air of the morning in the desert. And we had this shadow, um, uh, then we added it, and it, it was there was something very great in it in making making it, even though it was made in layers. And from there, we go to the hospital, and Silverio is in this long corridor, and um, it, it's the birth of the child that is then put back into the womb. It's very jarring for the audience. It's just it's a it's a shocking scene. It wakes the audience up um, and makes us realize this interesting journey that we're about to go on. What was what was your approach in that sequence of of just that long corridor? It almost looks like a a painting. I mean, that was just a beautiful shot. And then we move into where we're seeing these doctors and the parents kind of hovering over this this baby, which was also a completely different look. Um, so I'm curious about sort of the how how you distinguished those scenes. You know, these scenes were we we that was one of the uh, uh, first, it's the first scene we shot, I think, in the film. With uh, Alejandro and um, and our production, wonderful production designer Eugenio Caballero, uh, we he designed he designed the 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 the, the hospital, the corridor, designed the, the 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 whole hospital, the room, the the, the birth where where she gives birth, and um, the work was really together. We, the the film was really a group together working, you know. Uh, Around Alejandro with Eugenio and Ana Terraza, the costume designer, they they did a really magnificent work. And this hospital, the Coido Hospital, you're talking about, and the, and the hospital, where the the um, Alejandro really wanted that feeling of this uh, this mood of this darkness going to from darkness to light into a bright light, and um, we uh, we created with uh, with. Uh, the hallway we made it like really like a hospital hallway when we painted in stucco, which is very difficult paint to to make. I remember Genio made it in stucco for us. It was quite a magnificent work of uh, design for for us for lighting because the the way the stucco takes the light is very special. The way it bounces the light has a very uh, has a very special uh, um, it's a very special way the way it bounces and reflects on the hallway. So we wanted to 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 come to the to Eugenio like this to Eugenio, you know, like against the wall, you know, in his uh, in the, almost in his uh, dream already. And um, no, it was a very it was um, right from the beginning. It was very challenging the 
the movement of the light. We had the light moving outside the, the windows on a you know on a track. The light were where 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 we had the light tracks move, you know, and we created the light. Uh, we um, we looked at the light uh, in in uh, in the city and uh, through the window. We looked at the light, how the light would be, you know. Everything had a mix. We mixed everything between real. It had to be between realness and uh, mental and spiritual. You know, it was always uh, always like this. But everything was designed. I love when stage looks had a feeling of realness. There's something real in it. You know. And even though you you take off from reality to dream, you know, there are a couple of scenes that you know st stood out to me as as having so much going on that I, that I want to ask about. And uh, the first is when Silverio meets the ambassador and imagines these scenes of the Mexican American War. There's just people everywhere, and you, your camera work. You're up. You're down. Um, there's wide shots where we're just seeing all of this action. You can watch it over and over again and, and catch something else. Uh, talk about the the challenges of shooting that scene and and how long did that take just to to make sure you captured everything? You're talking about the the, the war scene, the yeah. battles. Yes, we we had <clears throat> the battle scene was shot with um, with a, we we had we shot it over many days, over a few days. And it was mixed with visual effects a lot. You know, you have these rampant soldiers like like a snake, and uh, so it was again. It was a mix of reality. We re shot in the real Chapultepec uh, uh, castle over over Mexico City, which is a real, very important, very old and uh, castle that allowed us to shoot. And um, so it was a big production. It was very was very um, challenging. That was also an early shoot in our in our schedule, in our film. And uh, no, we just shot it in many days like this. We just shot, uh, um, it was a very early morning, like for all the, the parade with the soldiers was the very first beginning of the sun rising. That's where we shot it. So we had to, re to design this beforehand to prepare this, Exactly the way it was going to be was storyboard was storyboarded and designed you know uh, be before beforehand, um, and uh, and it was very you know it was very challenging because there were visual effects in between you know in, from one shot to the other there were visual effects in it, so it was added, but it was a beautiful scene because it was shot in uh, all in like bright daylight you know. We went from the interior of the of the castle with the with with their their conversation in the all it's all real, you know, and then it becomes visual effects when the soldiers are there. We added here bits and pieces in it. And the next sort of centerpiece for me, which we saw so much of in the in the trailers, and and it's maybe what comes to mind when first when people first think of this film is that sort of single take dance sequence in the Mexican nightclub. There's so many extras. I read that there's something like 800 people or something like that. Um, and I read that you used something called the monster that you you referred to it as the monster to, to record that um, or to film that. And I'm curious, what is the monster? And and talk about using that. You want to know what is the monster? Yes, the monster, I'll tell you, it's a very funny story. But uh, we shot the California Dancing City, the uh, Dancing Club was amazing uh, scene, of course. And we shot it. The monster is um, is a Steadicam, but it's a new device that you add onto the Steadicam. The, you know what the Steadicam is? Yep. And it allows you to bring the camera from the floor to high up, way above the head. So it allows you to do that. So it's an arm, so it's a device added to the steady cam like a jar like almost like if you had a gyro head all whole held by um, by the steady cam operator so, so you need a very good steady cam operator and Harry Robbins was a very good camera operator and steady cam operator so he it was very very painful but difficult because we were shooting with a Vista vision camera with a digital uh, Alexa 65 digital camera which is uh, the format is Vista vision. It's a large format camera, like 70 mil, you know? So it's it's bigger, it's heavier, and it was mounted on the on the tree, the monster. The monster is actually the name 
Uh, it's a name we added, the crew added, to, because it was a monster to, to, to work with it. But the real name of it is called Trinity. Okay. It's a Trinity. It's made by, by this company, Ariflex, and for the, and, and it, we, it's an, uh, so it's just like a steady cam that allows you everything, basically, except it's very cumbersome. So when you were doing this crazy long takes, um, going around him into the California dancing club and following them all around. Imagine what it is with all the dancer swirling around, dancing around. It was very, very challenging. So there were a lot of uh, hiccups and stops and start again, you know, even though everything was designed before, the choreography was designed before, but the monster, the, the Trinity made it like really even, you know, more difficult, more challenging to execute the shots and together with the timing of the lights because every the lights were on light cues. So we're, we're our, our demo operator, we're all on headset and the demo operator was, um, we're, we're, we're directing the lights as, the, as the, the actors were moving around the California Dancing Club. The actor Silverio was walking with his with his wife and his family, then meeting his friends and his family, and and the camera was going around and the light was moving around. All the lights were on cues. There were hundreds and hundreds of lights all along, just on cues all the time. So it was difficult to to orchestrate all together. Is that Alejandro was directing everything, all, all of us together. Is it unique, for, you know, depending on the film that you're working on or, you know, how many different sort of cameras or lenses and filters are you talking about when you're working on a film like this? On a film like this, we're, we, I, I'm lucky to work with directors that shoot mainly with one camera. We always say, oh, we shoot with one camera with the directors I, I work with, especially a, a very good director like Alejandro. We work with one camera, but at the same time, there are days where we shoot with two cameras, three cameras, you know, or more cameras if needed because of because of some explosion or visual effect. But let's say on a movie like this, on a movie like this, we we were we had three camera bodies all the time, three cameras. There were one was ready on the monster on this on this uh, Trinity, one was ready on a techno crane all the time. One way it was ready on tracks on a dolly. So we were going from one to the other. And sometimes we were using two cameras because we, we needed to, it was better for the actors, you know, for the scene. It was better to have two angles. But but a director like Alejandro is very, very con he, he knows, he controls, he knows what's best for the for the for the story, for the scene. And when we put two cameras, we 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 do it together and, you know, it's not like you're doing multiple cameras and shoot, shoot, shoot with five cameras. It's a different, you know, when you do serious movies like that. It's a, wow. It's one camera. I want to talk a, a little bit about like early on in your career. I mean, throughout your career, you've worked with some many great directors. You've done thrillers, international film, romantic comedies. Um, but I'm I, I'm also curious about music videos that you've done because I find it really interesting. Some of the musical artists you've worked with, from Jay Z to Lady Gaga, Mariah Carey, but you've done a lot with Madonna specifically. Yeah. I, mean, I think you did her Fever music video, Frozen, which is one of her best. Um, and so, did you form that relationship before Evita and then get into that with her, or or did she continue working with you after that, or what? What what's that relationship? With Madonna? Well, with, the ex with the example of uh, Madonna, for instance, you you're you're taking this example of Madonna. I worked with her before Evita on a music video, and I love I liked working with her. But then it was by chance that uh, Alan Parker asked me to photograph Evita, wow. and um, I remember I remember I was not sure if I if I could do a musical, you know, if a musical was something that was in me to do, and then. Well, I went to London to to meet with him and talk, and he showed me the 
He showed me how passionate he was about the life of Evita Perron and Madonna doing Evita Perron. And then she, she did the same thing with uh, Madonna. She put herself completely into the role very seriously, you know, very deeply, very seriously. She became Evita Perron for us, for the movie. For And uh, and I loved, I loved working with her on Evita. It was wonderful. And then we did Frozen and it was amazing. She, she was... Uh, She's a very serious um, actress. She, she can do music videos and acting. I think was a good director. She, she, you know, it was a great experience with her. And then we formed. Yeah, we had a very nice, uh, friendly relation because we were working together with very different directors, going from um, Alan Parker to uh, Chris Cunningham, the music video director. Just two amazing, very different directors. You know. And Very then you different. worked on her Sticky and Sweet tour, I believe. So did you, you did the... Oh, yeah, then, I, then I, she asked me to come to do to in Argentina to just to supervise her. her. Wow. I said, I said, Louis, I'm not doing Madonna. I'm not doing uh, anything. I'm just here. I said, no, your your eyes are here. You're, you're watching me. And I know that I'm safe. It was wonderful. What films inspired you to, to get into to film? And at what point did you realize that the art of cinematography specifically was was the path that you wanted to take? Oh, so good you're asking me these questions very deep inside. Uh, yeah, you're very good. It's very good. My my the movies that influenced me, one of the movies that really blew my mind that I watched quite early was The Sunrise by Murnau. Okay. It was a very important film for me. Then I won then when I was really um, early on my my um sister was older than me took i was very i was too young maybe but i went to see the conformist by bernardo bertolucci and at the same time i what i remember watching citizen kane also was photographed by greg toland you know so it was like vittorio storaro greg toland you know it, it, was, it was it was a mix of things and and i love and i watch a lot of silent movies you know yeah. Like like Bursby Berkeley musical comedies and sound comedies, but also some silent movies before, like The Greed, you know. There were a mixture of things that I wanted to be a film director. And, and I went to NYU Film School in New York to be a film director. And little, it's very interesting, your question, because exactly what happened. The, little by little, I, I got, I feel I got really haunted by by the mood, by the feeling that I wanted to give the, the mood of a film, you know. And the mood for me was a way of directing. It was a different directing, but I needed a director to be able to direct this mood, to make this, this happen. So then I, I realized the director was really a director. It was my first, uh, the person that I was going to make this for, for them, you know. Create, create this for them. No, it was very, very exciting. It's very interesting to to answer this question because um, there were movies like this that really it was a mixture, mixture of films, a mixture of period, you know. And then little by little, I was able to realize it, to express myself, you know, on movies like Seven or, you know, or Delicatessen. I was in color and and then before that, black and white. Well, it certainly worked out beautifully for you. And Darius, congratulations on this Oscar nomination for Bardo. It's oh, thank you. Thank it's you very incredibly much. deserved. We look forward to seeing you on that red carpet and best of luck on Oscar night. Thanks for taking some time to talk with Gold Derby today. Thank you very much.